Jason stepped out of the movie theater. At first he had just hoped it would be warm or that there might be some candy left inside. It had been warm enough, but there wasn't any candy. He supposed he should have known that. Treats like candy were rare, and incredibly expensive. The theater did have a generator, though, and he had been able to get a movie to run. It had been a miracle that it worked. The generator had fuel, but it was almost past its shelf life. The film had been thrown on the floor in a tangled mess, and the projector looked ancient. Still, it had been enough. He would have loved to have candy or popcorn, but even just watching a movie in a building that was still intact was a miracle. A building where the cold wasn't too bad, and the ceiling hadn't caved in too. He almost hated to leave, but there wasn't much for him there, and he needed to find food. The city had been almost picked clean. The shops were empty, the gas stations had been torn apart for even the tiniest bit of fuel or food, apartment buildings had been ransacked, offices were destroyed, and warehouses had been raided for anything useful. Eventually people started burning parts of the buildings to keep warm. Some had even started burning art, though most of the survivors had frowned on that. They came to a compromise where anything after 1950 was fair game. The survivors either didn't care about art, or they thought the more recent art didn't really qualify. Still, many beautiful things in the city had been destroyed in desperation and despair. People had tried almost everything to survive, even eating each other, though that was a bridge too far for Jason. He knew the hunger that drove men to do things like that, but he couldn't bring himself to do it. Something just felt wrong about it. The survivors had stripped the city bare in an attempt to find anything useful, leaving behind a hollow, empty husk. Some part of Jason was sad to see it. He hadn't grown up inside the city, but he had always lived within a 30-minute drive of it, and he had many fond memories of it. It wasn't the greatest city ever made, but it was a beautiful place, and the people had been happy and proud once. After the collapse, everything changed. People outside the city fared better, especially if they had land to grow food. Even that didn't save everyone. Not all the people in the country actually grew food, and even if they did, they were only really protected from the hunger and the cold. They still had the diseases, the riots and looters, and the despair. Most people in the country, or in smaller towns, had some protection from the rioters and looters. Most of the thugs that tried to steal food and supplies came from the bigger cities. At first they were surrounded by a strong military presence that kept them inside their city. And by the time the military disbanded, most of the supplies were gone. Whatever warlords formed from the remnants of the military broke quickly when they realized the people in the country still had guns and plenty of ammo. A couple groups of raiders did manage to see supplies a couple of times, but the people in the country either had horses or stockpiled fuel and were able to catch up and run down the raiders. There was only one time where the raiders had been successful. They managed to raid an entire town. They massacred most of the people and hauled away the rest to use in work camps. Over 150 innocent people had died in that raid, and they were just the ones that Jason could verify. He had no doubts that the raiders had killed more. The raid was successful, but it didn't improve things in the city all that much. People were still fighting over scraps of food, and between the diseases, the elements, and the despair, the city population had been decimated. When the raiders returned, they only managed to keep order for a couple of weeks before all vestiges of society collapsed. People turned on each other and began to slaughter each other in the streets. The warlords made a truce and took all their most loyal followers and the remaining supplies and holed up in the center of the city. It kept them safe from the chaos in the rest of the city, but they had made a prison for themselves. Jason remembered as their supplies began to dwindle. He remembered that soon after the people killed themselves in the streets, the city center began to collapse too. There were fires, explosions, and screams of dying men and women. A month after the raid, the whole city went quiet. That had been five years before. Since then, nature had largely reclaimed the city. That summer, saplings grew out of buildings or in the middle of the streets. Grass grew tall in the parks, and wild animals roamed unchecked. Jason was no expert, but he had learned to hunt some of them, and at least during the summer he hadn't had to worry about food. In the fall, when all the wild plants were ready to harvest and when the animals still grazed in the open, Jason had even managed to gain weight. It was winter now, though, and even though it hadn't snowed, it was still bitterly cold and almost nothing grew. Jason didn't have much competition in the city. The city had a population close to 900,000 people. After five years of death, disease, famine, and slaughter, the population dropped to maybe nine or ten people at most. Jason couldn't be sure. He had only encountered two of them, and even during the summer when food was plentiful, no one wanted to approach anyone else. No one knew who the psychopaths, the cannibals, or the crazed lunatics were, and no one really wanted to take a chance. People killed each other over scraps that they wouldn't have given to dogs before the collapse. Jason had managed to avoid killing anyone, but more from luck than from any real moral principle. He had just never needed to kill someone, but he knew he was by far the exception, and he didn't want to risk approaching someone and getting killed. He had kept a close eye on footprints, dead animals that had signs of being killed by people, and cold campfires. The city was a big place, but he had roamed over most of it in the last couple of years, and hadn't seen many traces of people. From what he had seen, Ten was a generous estimate. 
He knew people had managed to survive in the country, but he didn't want to venture out that way any time soon. The memory of raiders was still too fresh in their minds, and even in the country, strangers weren't a welcome sight. Jason had largely had the city to himself. He had managed to find some food scraps, but most of the food during the winter came from the few animals that were out and about still. He hadn't had much luck with them in a while either, though, and all his provisions were gone. He had hoped the theater would have something, but it had been empty. Still, he had gotten to watch a movie, and that did wonders to lift his spirits. Jason walked through the streets of the old city. He remembered when it still had people, when it had lights to drive out the darkness in the nighttime, when it had water running through the fountains and people could live in relative ease. They had complained about it then. Jason had been one of the complainers. He had been one of the ones to object to the rich living in luxury while the poor had nothing. He had viewed himself as poor too. He had believed that the rich were being unfair and that he deserved better pay for his work. If only he could speak with himself back then. If only he could tell himself what the world was actually like. He wanted to tell himself that his life was far more comfortable and luxurious than he could possibly have imagined, and that he didn't work nearly as hard as he thought he did. He wished he could have told himself that he was richer than a king. Jason couldn't count how many days he had spent working, from the time the sun rose to the time it set, gathering firewood or food or making tools. Many times he would go the entire day without food. That was to say nothing of the basic amenities, like an extra set of clothes or clean water to bathe, or just being able to wipe his own ass with something other than a fern. He would have given anything to have one of those things back. Jason walked down to the museum. It had a pond by it, and he stopped to get a drink before heading inside. He liked the museums, especially if there was art inside. He liked to remember better times, when the world was still beautiful. The paintings in the museum weren't by anyone that he knew. Not that he knew many artists. Still, he loved to sit and look at the paintings or sculptures. He especially liked to look at the stained glass. It was pretty, and it felt almost divine. He walked through the halls and admired the beauty. There was something about looking at art that seemed to make Jason feel less bad about himself. Maybe it was because the paintings portrayed a time better than his own, and he could pretend to be living in that time instead. Maybe it was because looking at art was peaceful, and it helped to calm him and relieve the stress of day-to-day -day life. Maybe it was just because it was a reminder that not all the beautiful things were gone, and that beauty would never truly be gone forever. He didn't know what drew him to the art, but his last idea was his favorite. Jason left the museum. It was a pretty place, but it wouldn't keep him warm, and there was no food inside. The paintings helped him feel better, but they didn't put food in his belly. He sighed and stepped out into the cold city. The sky was covered by gray clouds, and the sun hadn't shown itself the entire day. He sighed and set off to the more overgrown parts of the city to try and find a meal. They were a couple of miles away, and he knew he would be doing a lot of walking to get to where the animals were. As he walked, his homemade shoes sank into the mud and got soaked. He inhaled sharply as the cold water touched his feet. He stamped his feet bitterly, thinking that back before the collapse he had been able to get good shoes. It was only after seriously thinking back to the old world that he realized the reality. Water had always gotten into his shoes, and modern advancements had never really solved that problem fully. He sighed and thought in frustration about how some things never changed. He found his way over to the nearest part of the city that had been reclaimed by wilderness. Since the city had been ruined, he had renamed parts of it. He had been heading for the city circle, which he had renamed Monument Plains. He had renamed it because it was the flattest part of the city, and the grass grew tall over what was left of the brick roads. It had also been the site of the biggest massacre in the city. It was almost completely desolate by the time he got there from the museum. The winter had set in, and all the grass had died. The few trees that had grown up in the last couple of years lost all their leaves and everything looked dreary and lifeless. He stepped onto the plains and took a deep breath through his nose. He smelled the fresh, crisp winter air and listened for movement. To his left he heard a soft crunch in the grass. He turned to see a wild turkey. His stomach rumbled at the thought and he silently knocked an arrow and turned to face the bird. The bird was walking absentmindedly and didn't seem to notice Jason. He drew back the arrow and aimed for the animal. He had grown accustomed to using the weapon, and he aimed slightly above the animal as he tried to gauge the distance. He fired, and the arrow flew through the air. It struck the ground next to the turkey, missing by inches. The turkey ran, and Jason cursed the animal, drawing another arrow and chasing it down. He ran after the bird, but it was surprisingly fast and managed to weave its way through the rusted cars and leftover trash that littered the streets, avoiding Jason. He chased the bird down a twisted path, sliding across the hoods of cars and jumping over old benches. He was gaining ground on the turkey, and he knew he would have it soon. He drew another arrow as he ran, and he knocked it on the bow. If he could just get a clean shot, the bird would be his. He jumped over the bench and rolled on the ground, raising himself on the one knee. In one fluid motion, he drew back and fired a shot at the bird. It landed inches from the bird's head, and the bird ran away in a panic, squeezing its way through a hole in the wall. He threw his bow on the ground and cursed. How could he have missed the bird? It was a straight shot, and he had made shots that were twice as difficult. 
If he didn't know better, he would have thought someone was protecting the bird. He kicked the ground angrily. He was hungry. Food was scarce, and that turkey would have kept him fed for days. He could have used it, too. The feathers could have made more arrows. How was he supposed to eat now? What was he supposed to eat? Air? He fumed as he paced back and forth until he finally managed to get his anger under control. He took a deep breath and grabbed his bow, walking towards the hole in the wall to try and track down the turkey. The hole was too small for him to squeeze through, but he knew there had to be a way into the building. He walked around the store, looking for an entrance. When he came to the front of the building, he swore again. It had caved in completely, and the door was blocked by rubble from the upper floors. He looked around to see if there was anything he could do. The building looked like it had a flat roof, and it looked like he could break through the door on the roof without much effort. If he could get to the roof, he might be able to find the turkey. He looked around for access points, but there was no way up. The only way that he thought he might be able to find a way in was by jumping onto the roof from a nearby building. He looked to the left and to the right of the store. To the left was a shorter building, and Jason knew he couldn't get onto the roof using that building. To the right was a church. It was tall, and the roof was sloped and uneven, but he might be able to get there if he was willing to climb. He sighed as he thought about how much work it was to get one bird. Jason walked into the church and forgot all about the bird. He gasped when he saw the inside of the building. It was littered with corpses. Five men and a woman had gathered in the church for something. Jason saw empty boxes and cans around the people, and he realized what it was. They had found food, all of them, and they had killed each other to get it. For the first time in days, he forgot about his stomach. The corpses had made him lose his appetite. Part of him felt sick. He didn't want to judge the people. He had felt the hunger, and he had lived through days when owning a moldy piece of bread was enough to rob and kill a man. Still, they weren't fighting over scraps. They were fighting over greed. There had been plenty of food in the building. It had been at least enough to hold them over until they could find more game. It was harder work, but the city was teeming with animals, even in the winter. They could have shared it, and then worked together to find more food. Instead, they had killed each other over it. Jason looked at the carnage. The bodies were maybe a day or two old, and they had been partially eaten by wildlife. There was something ironic about it, but he was too shocked by the scene to feel any humor in it. He sat down in one of the pews and buried his head. He thought about the past few days. He would have killed them all for the food, too. He had been hungry, and the food would have lasted him for over a week. The survivors had probably devoured it in an hour before turning on each other, and the only thing that kept him from dying with them was being late to the feast. He sat and thought about the art that he loved. It was there in the church, too. There were sculptures and paintings and stained-glass depictions of Christ on the cross and baby Jesus in the manger. There was one stained window depicting an angel, probably Gabriel. He looked from the art down to the food. He grabbed a Bible from the pew and it fell open to a random page. He glanced down and read. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He set the book down and looked around him at the carnage and at the art in the church. He thought about everything he had seen, and he wondered at the verse he had read. He didn't think about the meaning of it, but just at the thought that people had believed it. The people who had built the church believed it, and many people had gone to church believing it. People had believed it all through the Dark Ages, too, when times were about as good as they were for Jason. Countless men and women had lived and died believing that verse and all the other stuff in that book. Before them, people had believed in other gods, too. The ones that inspired men to build the Parthenon in Greece and the Sphinx in Egypt. Men and women had lived great lives and built mighty empires for their gods, and all of them ended exactly like the scene in the church before him. The nations before him had torn themselves apart, killing each other over the scraps of a falling empire. Brothers killed brothers over what had probably been as much, if not less, food than what had been in the church with the survivors. He thought about it even longer. Men had believed in their old gods when times were just as bad as they were for Jason and they had gone on to build empires. It was only when men gave up on the old gods that the nations collapsed. Rome fell when she became Christian. His home had fallen when she walked away from Christianity, or any other religion for that matter. Jason thought about the gods for which men built statues and temples, who inspired paintings and songs and stained glass windows. Maybe they were real. Maybe only some, or even only one was real. Maybe there was some immortal, infinite being that sat and watched over the nations, preserving them with his hand and watching over them. Maybe all that was true, and there really was a god who sustained throughout the ages. Jason looked around the church. If there was a god like that, he had abandoned them. Though, as far as Jason could tell, he hadn't been the first one to walk away. The church had been empty long before the nation had been destroyed. Still, if some god had resided in the church, he had left only empty ruins behind. Jason looked at the church, and he doubted any gods would live there anymore. Maybe there was some god out there, watching over the nations. Maybe he was the same god who watched over the turkey. Maybe there wasn't a god either.
and it was just men looking up to heaven, expecting to see someone there. Jason didn't really care in that moment. He thought more about the men. As he thought about it, one thing became clear to him. The men who had died in the church, whose bodies decorated the floors around him, they had thought about only one thing. Their minds had been on their stocks. They only thought about the bare necessities needed to help them survive until the next day. They couldn't have been more different from the men who built the church. Maybe the men who built the church had plenty of food each day, but if they did, it was only because they thought about more than food. They thought about the old god, who they believed would sustain them through the ages. They thought about the future, and about things that were more important than just being warm and well-fed. They hadn't lived on bread alone. Jason thought about himself. He was just like the dead men around him. He had only run into the building to find a turkey for dinner. He didn't believe in the old god that lived in the ruins of the church. But for the first time, he understood why men would waste their time in that building every Sunday morning. He stood up and looked around. The church was in ruins. There was a hole in the ceiling, pews had been overturned, and windows, even some of the stained glass ones that he loved, were broken into pieces on the ground. There were corpses on the floor and empty boxes strewn across the church. He was about to leave when he saw something small that caught his eye. In the outstretched hand of one of the dead men was a piece of bread. It looked like hardtack, or something similar. Somehow, Jason knew it had been the last scrap of food that all the people in the building had died over. The poor man had died before he could even claim his prize. Jason walked over and took the small piece of bread and turned to leave. Right as he was about to step outside, though, he paused. He turned back and went towards the altar. He paused and looked around him, and he took a deep breath. He broke the bread in half and placed it on the altar before turning to leave. As he left, he said a quiet prayer of thanks to the old god.